So technology is critical for society. I think that's probably self-evident to the TEDx crowd, but it's worth at least thinking about. Because not only are we getting progressively cooler and more useful technologies, electricity, television, PCs, the web, mobile, Internet of Things, we're also adopting those technologies at an ever-increasing rate. And technology impacts everyone. You might be excited about some sort of hipster, artisanal, back-to-nature chocolate bars, but you're going to find out about them on Pinterest, and you're going to talk to your friends about them using your iPhone. Security is critical for technology. As we come to increasingly depend on these technologies, we start to have explicit and more important implicit expectations of how our data is going to be treated. In the security world, we think about this with the acronym CIA. Now, I don't mean the Central Intelligence Agency. What I mean is confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Because confidentiality causes us to ask the question, who has access to my data? Integrity causes us to ask the question, who can modify my data? And availability causes us to ask the question, do I have access to my data? Everybody thinks about this uh, you know, a lot with credit cards, you know, credit card information being compromised, and that's a, a, an important example. But if you think about it, when your credit card number is compromised, the bank spends a couple dollars, issues you a new card, everybody goes on with their lives. But what about if your medical information is compromised? Once that data is out, you can never bring it back in. And so when we talk about security, we're not just talking about financial information. Technology these days is pretty much basically all software. Hardware moves comparatively slow. And even the things that we think of as hardware, processing, storage, networking, all of those have a malleable layer of software on top that makes everything work together. And when you think about applications, those are all software. If you want to talk to people on Facebook, that's software. If you want to order things from Amazon and have them bring, you to, bring them to you an, an hour later, that's software. If you want to do some sort of big data analysis and cure cancer, you're going to be doing that with software. So the coders that write this software basically control the pace of innovation. What that also means is that they control the security of the systems that they're ultimately creating. That would all be well and good if the coders building these systems knew about security, but by and large they don't. I went to Trinity University here in town, received an excellent education. It was reassuringly expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and in this, you know, what prepared me vocationally to be a professional programmer, we almost never talked about security. In our networking class, we had a little game to see who could show the funniest window on the professor's workstation. In a systems administration seminar, we learned that we could spoof emails as if we were the professor. But really, security was viewed as something specialized or as an afterthought. It wasn't central to the curriculum. We need to change the way that we create coders if we want them to build secure systems. This has to be baked in from the start. It's not something that we're able to bolt on. You know, in my company, we make a lot of money doing aftermarket training to teach de developers about security, and that's fantastic. But it doesn't scale. We've got to change the way that we create these coders. Well, how do you get coders to care about security? This is hard to do. There's a lot to learn in a computer science education. And a lot of times, students don't have the context that the industry really wants them to have. So that makes it really challenging to reach them. Let's look at an example. Important data gets stored in databases. You access this data using the structured query language, or SQL. SQL injection is a vulnerability that can impact the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data. If you're creating applications that manage credit card data, you have to test those applications for SQL injection and other vulnerabilities based on the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard, or PCI DSS. Now, you, you wouldn't think that you could get bored or lost during a six-minute talk. <laughs> yeah, but we managed. We managed. <laughs> And imagine, if you will, that you're a college student. You've never, never taken a database class. You're probably not super concerned about your credit card information, as long as there's a, you know, still a, you know, space on the balance. We've got to make this simpler for programmers to think about. Right? We've got to make this message more universal. And what I want people to start doing is getting coders to ask, what shouldn't my code do? There's a lot of thought in software about what your software should do, right? If I'm building a banking system, I should be able to transfer money from my checking account to my savings account. And traditional software testing finds those types of problems. We need to flip that around 
and get developers and coders to start asking questions. What shouldn't my system do? For example, if I'm building a banking system, I probably shouldn't be able to transfer money from your savings account to my checking account. <laughs> this won't alleviate all security issues, but it will start to change the landscape, and it will start to set the foundation for building more secure systems in the future. We need to install an adversarial mindset in the software developer population. So in closing, we need coders to start not just thinking about what their code does, but also figuring out what shouldn't my code be doing. And as consumers of technology, we need to start asking the people that are providing us with that technology, what have you done to make sure that this only does what it's supposed to do? If we can do that, we can start building a more secure future. Thank you.